Okay, everybody, I'm going to be reading out of Slacker by Gordon Corman. Uh, I'm going to read the second part of chapter 27, which involves Cameron Boxer. Cameron has just found out that his sister was the one behind the PAG website. She was sending in all those extra pagger messages and uh, had the, wet, the, the codes for the Sycamore Middle School website. And so he is now going to confront her over at Katrina's house. He has just gone up her stairs, and he said nothing was going to compare to what he was about to unleash on his rotten sister. So here we go, picking up from there. As I burst into the room, a deep voice declared, Prepare for battle. And that was when I saw them. The girls were in front of the TV gaming. Katrina wore a regular microphone, but Melody's was a shiny black helmet that completely covered her face. She spoke, The force is strong with you, young Jedi, but you will be annihilated. The voice that came out wasn't Melody's. It wasn't even close. It was the low, rich, breathless bass of Darth Vader. I nearly fainted on the spot. Not only was Melody the hacker who was ruining my life on the PAG webpage, she was also the rogue gamer who had been hounding me for months on the network, following me, challenging me, owning me. Evil McKill people of Toronto, Canada wasn't from Canada at all. She was from my house, up the stairs, second door to the left. If I didn't drop dead right there on Katrina's imperial snow walker carpet, I was going to live forever. There used to be a time when the world made sense, when video games were important, and a guy could live his life the way he wanted. But that was long, long ago in a galaxy far, far away. Now up was down, black was white, and the only thing anybody cared about was a club that wasn't supposed to exist in the first place. You couldn't depend on friends or parents and definitely not sisters. Even something as solid as a freeway ramp might not be there the next time you looked. So what could you depend on? Just this, that there would always be someone to throw an alien disruptor grenade into your plans. Katrina noticed me first. Her reaction was to pull the Darth Vader voice synthesizer helmet off of her friend's head. I at least had the satisfaction of watching Melody turn green when she saw me standing there. Hey, Cam, she managed. Mom and Dad need you at home, I gritted through clenched teeth, right now. It was a miracle I wasn't yelling at the top of my lungs. That lasted about three steps past the Bundy's front porch. I unloaded on her, not just about evil McKill people, but the web page thing too. All the quiet I had managed before was out the window now. I was amazed that streetlights were not exploding and satellites weren't dropping out of orbit from the sheer volume of my fury. They probably heard me on the Death Star. How did I ever hurt you? I raved. What terrible crime did I commit that I deserve this? What did I do to make you hate me so much that you could ever devote your whole life to wrecking everything that I care about? I mean, she had looked pretty scared while I was going off on her, but when she turned on me, her face was full of anger. Seriously? What did you ever do to me? Try being a second-class citizen in your own family. Try watching your brother bamboozle your parents so our whole house can revolve around your dumb lifestyle. Try being such a nobody in your own home that you have to go to your friend's house just to play a lousy video game. I let you play, I defended myself. Oh, sure. Between 4.30 and 5 a.m. on Tuesdays and alternate Thursdays. I moved a sofa cushion and you blamed me for throwing off your aim. You have no clue what it takes to game at a high level. I accused. No, she agreed. I know nothing about it. I'm just the person who beats you every single time. I'm on to you, Cam Boxer. You're not mad because I'm evil McKill people. You're mad because evil McKill people is better than you. You're not better than me, I stammered. It's just that the Darth Vader voice throws me off. But she had me there. I'd never gotten the best of evil McKill people. He, she was a master who had grown up and surpassed me under my very nose. Well, what about the webpage, huh? 
I ranted. You don't care about the PAG. You never did. You figured out why I started the whole thing and hacked into it just to stick it to me so I'd get in trouble with mom and dad, and you're still doing it, so I'll get in trouble at school, too. You're right, she admitted, a little shame-faced. It bothered me that mom and dad thought you were this big do-gooder when the whole, st- whole thing was baloney. I wanted to make you suffer for it. And I thought it was funny when Mr. Fanshawe took over and turned the PAG into a real club. But you know what? It only started as a goof. Once I saw how awesome it could be, I was on board just like everybody else. We helped so many people, and we helped ourselves at the same time. Everybody talks about school spirit, but all they mean is pep rallies and go team go. The PAG, that was school spirit. Ask anybody who was in it. They'll tell you how great it was. I thought of Xavier and his salsa bowl, currently full of Doritos going stale and gathering dust in our basement. Don't I count? I asked bitterly. It wasn't great for me. She shook her head. You're such an idiot, Cam. You're ticked off about the web page when you should be down on your knees thanking me for helping to take the PAG to the next level. Why, at its peak, you could have snapped your fingers and mobilized an army hundreds strong, ready to do anything that you wanted them to do. How many kids ever get that kind of power? Power has no place in my lifestyle. Well, maybe it should, she retorted. Little power would be a nice change in our house while we watch our parents' business and the whole town go down the drain. Like I could ever do anything about that, I said unhappily. Even if the PAG wasn't history and... Then my voice just trailed off. Okay, the PAG was over. But I thought of all those kids who had come up to me to say how sorry they were and how angry they were that we'd been blamed for something we didn't do. The phone calls and text messages, the notes jammed in my locker, the defiant comments that appeared on the illegal web page faster than the school could take them down. We were standing stock still in the middle of the road, Melody looking anxiously into my face. What is it, Cam? The PAG is gone, I managed, but we might still have the army.